Hey y'all, welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Abby. And I'm Brenton. And we are parents of six and foster parents. And so I want to talk about fostering versus or foster to adopt versus fostering only. Well, not foster to adopt. I don't like that term. Okay, okay, fostering. We would like to talk adoption. about foster parents and adoption. And does every foster parent want to adopt? Does every foster parent adopt the relationship between foster care and adoption? And just kind of delve into that a little bit more because I know it's a very taboo topic. And our goal with this channel is many things, but one of which is to destigmatize de foster care, to educate the general public about foster care and how it works in the state of Texas, and to empower and support foster parents. We ourselves have been foster parents for five years, and um, we are currently active foster parents. Um, we have one foster child in our home. It hasn't been six. Well, we took a year off. Oh. But yes, we started fostering over six years ago. Um, we are we are biological parents. We have three biological children. We have two adopted children, and we have one foster child. That makes the six in our home. So we have some varied experience across the board, and we're going to talk about it. Okay, so for everybody out there, you need to hear this. This is very important. Mm -hmm. Foster parents are not set out to take children. It's not the goal. The goal is always to reunify with family. Yep. Preferably biological parents. It's the best case scenario. If that's not a possibility, then next of kin. Um, just to allow that child to grow up with a family that which they were blessed with. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is the always the initial goal, and that's that would be best uh, best if that, that could happen every time. Unfortunately, just due to circumstances that are uh, and choices people make, that's not always possible. But that is always the goal to reunify. And I think we want people to hear our hearts in this. Um, the way it should be and the way it is for us is that foster care is a ministry where we stand in the gap for hurting families. So the goal is that we are able to come in, give love and support not only to the foster children, but also to their biological families and to foster that relationship between the foster child and their biological family and to do anything we can to encourage that. Our number one priority as foster parents is child safety and child well-being. Um, so, you know, like Brenton said, there is there are situations in which reunification becomes clear that it's impossible. But that is never the goal. I and that's why I dislike the term foster to adopt, because adoption is trauma. As a mom of two adopted children, I can tell you firsthand it's it's trauma. It's not the way God intended it to be. Um, adoption is born from brokenness, and while it is a beautiful thing and something that we are very grateful for, yeah, um, there is still going to be. Um, things that that child and you as a family have to work through um, because it's just not the natural way that it was meant to be. So we want you to hear our heart in that. Um, at the same time, we want to hold space um, and, and help people to understand that it is our expectation that we're gonna have these children in our home for sometimes a long time and have to say goodbye. And that's just the reality of being a foster parent. Um, I think that he's number nine. Nine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think uh, this one now is number nine. Um, and so obviously we have we have two adopted, but one of those was, was um, out of foster care, was our very first placement. Um, and one of those had nothing to do with foster care at all. Um, so out of nine, eight were reunified in some way. Um, Either with biological, biological parents, parents next grandparents, next of kin. Next of kin. Mm -hmm. Something somewhere along the way. And, uh, you know, I think a hard thing to do is, as a foster parent is to trust the situation that the child is being placed back into. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, that, that's a hard pill to swallow sometimes because you know, you know the situation that you have been in and how much love you care you're giving them. And you just hope that um, wherever, they, wherever they end up or go next, that they are, they are providing that same um, love and care and, and support and, and everything they need. Uh, but yeah, we, we've had we've had uh, nine placements. Eight have gone back, um, and so it's, that's that's the goal is to go back. Yep, and um, we have never. I think we're in like a new era of of 
our personal family and foster care. Um, we adopted our first foster placement. Uh, he had been with us for years and reunification and next of kin was an impossible thing in that case. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail about that, but it just was. And so um, basically, generally what happens is when you get licensed to be a foster parent, they will ask you, are you willing to adopt if it should come to that? And you can either say yes, you can say no, or you can say it situationally depends. Um, and so when we were licensed to become foster parents, we knew that adoption wasn't likely, um, but that it was possible. And our answer when we first became foster parents was we are open to adoption. So um, if it were to come up. And so that was not the goal that was we not had. The goal. But if the situation arise, arose where yes. That's where it was going. Then we were gonna, we were gonna have that conversation yep. to see if we thought it was best for our family. And at the time, and for the child. at the time, we had three children when when we said yes to that. Um, fast forward, you know, six years, we have a different family makeup. We have five children that are our forever children, um, and we, in getting back into after we adopted this little one that's in the frame here. Um, we took a year and a couple of months off of foster care. We really weren't sure if we were gonna go back to it, honestly. Like it's, you're working within a broken system and it can really wear you down. And after five years of it, it, it had worn us down. And once again, we weren't sure we were gonna come back to it, but God came knocking and just said, yes, you are. And we said, okay. Um, but in stepping out in faith in that, we were clear to our agency that while we would never say never because God can move, our goal was not to go adopt and have have a sixth child permanently um do you want to speak on that a little bit i have i gotta gather my thoughts um yeah so it's, it's not like we're saying like we're absolutely not we're never going to adopt but um our goal right now is not to uh, go through the adoption process if um if the situation comes up with 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 our placement um and it's a it's a it's a tough a tough thing to think about because you love this child and you and you're caring for this child for for however long it, it may be um but the way i kind of think about it and try to try to frame it to abby is um you know right now we are called to foster care um and there are a lot of families out there that, that really would love to have children of their own and for whatever reason it's not a possibility and so if it comes to an adoption situation then we can bless another family with a child that they have been they've been waiting and asking God for um, and we continue to do what we're called to do which is continue to foster and let's be very clear our prayer is that our foster placement gets to reunify with his birth mother. thousand percent that is our prayer that is the it's goal blurry. in this case right now that is the goal in every foster care case you would never change that goal until at least six months into the case especially when you're dealing with infant foster care our priority right now is that he bonds with his birth mom we're mm -hmm. doing weekly visits and that is where it's at um, but I think it's important to be open and to talk about the fact that not every foster parent wants to adopt. We know plenty of foster parents that have had 30, 40 kids in their home and never adopted. Um, and I think we just get the question a lot because we have adopted twice, like, oh, are you going to adopt this baby? Like people ask us all the time. And, um, you know, our answer is right now, the goal is that he goes back to his mom and we feel very called to foster care. We feel like there are more children out there that God has for us to love on and to reunify and to support that. And so I guess we're just kind of holding it with an open hand, but we want to like bring light to the fact that the goal of foster care is not adoption, that there are many foster parents that do not want to adopt. That feel and there's no problem just being mm -hmm. a foster parent. And if that situation does arise to, to yep. allow another family to be blessed in that way. I think my struggle personally with the whole situation, I've been prepared because I've done it and I mean, it sucks every time, but I've sent eight babies home and we do infant foster care. So it's been all babies okay. um, with the exception yeah. of a two year old. Okay. But um, I've sent eight oh. babies home. I know how to say goodbye. I know how to reunify, I've done that. I've never, for lack of better words and not eloquently saying, kicked a child out of my home, right? The only one that we've had that couldn't reunify we've adopted. And so I feel like I've been processing through like a lot of guilt in my mind and a lot of what ifs, even though we're still so early on in this case, just letting my mind go there. Like what happens if, um, but just truly feeling called to the foster care ministry. Um, 
And like I said, we try to be very open on this channel of, of the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, because we don't ever want to paint this rosy rainbow picture of foster care because it is not easy. It is very hard, mm -hmm. um, but it's very difficult. Um, you know, there are there are certain people that uh, that they really do enter this realm to adopt, and that's a, that's a different avenue because you were um, you were going to take placement of a child who uh, mm -hmm. upon upon whether it's a, a removal, whether it's a, what, what do they call it, where they drop it off in the fire department, what, what's that? Oh, like a safe haven. Yeah, a safe haven, whatever. That's or, a, that's or the a, termination of rights have already happened. Yes, so that's a different situation. And there are some people that, that, that look through the foster care system for adoption, um, but they only take the placements that are, oh, don't touch that. That are already that are already moving that way, or are already yeah. ready to go. Well, through. and because let's be clear, there are thousands of children, um, mostly older children, like above the age of six, in the foster care system in Texas that are waiting to be adopted, whose parental rights have been terminated. They might have been in foster care for three, four, five years, and they're still waiting on an adoptive family. So there is a, a huge need, need for that for adoptive families within the foster care system, and we don't want to brush over that fact. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so there are plenty of families, and, and to adopt in the state of Texas through the foster care system, you do have to be a licensed foster parent. So that's just how it works. Um, that's how they vet people. Um, you know, you see like the Wednesday's child and stuff like on TV. There is a huge need for adoptive willing parents through the foster care system. There's also a huge need for foster parents that are great at loving these kids, great at giving them attachment, and then great at passing them back to their families or to you know, other families who are willing to adopt. So there's a, it runs the gamut, it runs the gamut. I think we just wanna be open and honest and sharing our heart and also educationally. Um, so, you know, just to conclude, um, oh, and I guess the last thing I should say is typically, if you are a foster home who is open to adoption and it gets to the place where the case is moving that way, they recognize the fact the child has already bonded to you and your family. And as long as they feel like it's a good mutual fit, foster parents would be given generally a safe uh, preference First, yeah, because right they're, they're first already, refusal, basically. Yeah, because they've already bonded with you. They're comfortable in their environment. You you've been raising them, so if it's going that way, and and you have and, and throughout the process, you have said I'm open to it. They're going to ask you that question, so you need to be prepared for it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if the answer is no, that's perfectly fine too. Yeah, and then at that point, they would often, especially if they're a younger child, uh, look for a foster to adopt home or a foster home who is open to adoption because the quicker they can achieve permanency and the stability, the better it is. Um, so once again, our goal in this case is reunification and if and when that changes, we at that point will move forward with what we need to do um, to move forward. I think that's all. It's a personal topic, so Very hopefully personal. this was helpful. Thanks y'all.